Well, it's two o'clock and I have been doing all this work on the computer. It must be done. And a lot of times what I find is that you have to educate people. So I'm going to educate y'all real quick on Mary McLeod Bethune, a very strong black woman. And one of her quotes that I love, right? Share it with you. Because a lot of times I find, especially working with the education system and working with people that make decisions about the education system, as well as jobs and a number of things, that they seem to think I'm dumb. They seem to think that <laughs> I don't know what the hell's going on. Number one, before you send an email out to anyone, make sure you know what you're talking about. Have those links, have those research and be able to cite your sources. So when you say something, it's not just you saying it. And sometimes I have people who work in the government, who work in the school system, who clearly don't know I've worked in both and that I'm confused about something. I ain't confused about nothing. You're confused. So when someone emails to say that they're confused by you, say it in a nice way. Let me clear up your confusion for you, darling. Because nine times out of ten, the person that's confused is them. They're confused how are you so smart and strong, right? So a lot of times I don't let people in their foolishness roll like that. I don't let it slide. Nope, I'm not going to let you slide. And the reason why is because I know that I'm very well educated. You don't know that, but now you do. And so I have to remind some folk that the little job that you now have, I did that job a long time ago, baby. And I did it in a good way. And the little programs that you're putting out for people, I participated and benefited from those programs many years ago. That's why I um, believe in planning ahead and getting my children on the right trajectory to be successful. I mean, I just made a whole video about this. And so when someone emails you that they're confused, you are confusing them. Or even face to face, people do it all the time. They'll try to switch my words up or try to make it seem like I don't understand what's going on. Oh no, I always understand. The other day when I had to go in the police station, the and before I went there, I talked to officer, he's like, You look like you lost. I said, Oh no, I know where I'm at. I'm in the right place at the right time. Huh. Huh. When someone says stuff to you like, you look like you're lost. You're the one that's lost, not me. Because you lost the battle fucking with me. And so before I, while I was preparing myself, because I knew it was going to be somebody, it's always somebody that wants to try to discredit me. Or act like I don't understand what's going on. Oh, I understand exactly what you're doing. And that's the thing. That's why they're confused. They're trying to figure out how, to, how am I on to them. So I watched a video. And I really like it. Uh, Diamond Royal Ministries, I really appreciate your video because it gave me that word that I need to know, to have that faith. That, yeah, people are going to talk about you. They're going to do all kinds of things. But the Lord rewards you. And that's why I'm reaping all the rewards and all the benefits. So let me explain real quick that when you want your children to be successful, you want them to be able to do it on their own accord. Not through people claiming, well, because you their mama, they got this and they got that. And also to show them, even though I'm your mother, you're still going to have to work hard for these things. And I allow my children to make their own decisions. So a lot of times my children are like, why can't they be in music and all these things? It's not that you can't be in music, but you're just not going to be in Hollywood. Ain't nobody going to take advantage of you. And you're not going to have a job. You're going to have a career. So while some people are more than happy to let their children work at restaurants and fast food, not me. Because I recently went out there to see if it was still just as bad as it has been. And it is. A lot of these jobs, they are to create workers, not to create career-minded women. And so in all my careers, I've had to deal with somebody trying to tell me I don't belong, I don't fit in, I'm not qualified, and I have to always explain my qualifications. And so I don't have to explain anything. I let my uh, words do the talking, and sometimes less talking, more listening, and more writing is necessary. Because people love to say, I can't understand you. So that's why I switch up my voice. No, you can understand me. You can understand me quite well.
Yeah, you can. See how I did that on you? It's called code switching. So a lot of people do. So I have my professional voice, and then I have my home voice. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. Knowing that my children are at the age where they're going to want to work, I want to make sure that before they work, that they have the skills and the tools necessary. That's why I take the time to research everything, and I plan ahead. See, this is already almost March, right? And do you know what March is? Women's History Month. So they thought Black History Month, I was on fire. Wait till they see what I do for all women and all young ladies. Absolutely. To show them you can be who you want to be. It's always somebody trying to hold you back. It's always somebody trying to put a negative thought in your head. Like this fool did. And I read them for filth. Because not only did I break down the different classifications of the different types of careers and career opportunities and career programs. I registered my children in advance. It's up to them if they want to go. But I show the records to show these are the things their mother does in advance. So when I needed to get them in summer camp for leadership, it was done. And I went when it's so damn expensive and I got multiple scholarships, multiple for different types of programs. Right. It's nothing wrong. Apply. Some people, they won't apply for anything. It doesn't mean that you're poor. Apply for it. If you get it good. School is very expensive. All my schooling right now with cybersecurity and business intelligence, I don't pay for it. I went and I applied for scholarships. I applied for boot camps, internships, whatever. And a lot of times I get these opportunities because I volunteer so much. People remember me. They're willing to help me out and tell me the right information. And so that's why I appreciate that. And I, even though I'm a black woman, a Native American woman, I still help every woman that's respectful. You're respectful, honey. I'm going to help you. Because I know you've probably had somebody, and a lot of times it's not a man, it's often a woman who doesn't want you to be successful, doesn't feel that you fit their criteria of what it means to be successful. And so they're going to try to find a way to poke some hole in your dream, make you seem confused. Oh, no. So I always save the emails and I hit them back with the email. Excuse me. You don't recall sending me this email where I... We attended orientation. We attended all these things. And I know what they need to do. It's up to them if they want to do it. I'm just demonstrating what a strong black woman does, what a strong black mother does for her family to advocate. So, yeah, you're going to have people to tell you, like they told me, you can't afford to go to that school. You're not going to get in. I bet you I will. I bet you I will. And then when I get in, I say, run your mouth now, bitch. And then what you going to do? Nothing, but find a way to try to distract me and deter me from what I'm trying to do. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So especially with dealing with the education system, where people think they're more educated than you, hmm, I used to work in the education system, but so that's why I wrote, it takes a village to raise a child. That is why when I work with educators, I want to develop a plan that's comprehensive for all children. Given the nature of my professional and volunteer work experience, I want to make sure that my children are given the best opportunities by working for them. That is the whole thing. A lot of people, I went to school with them. I grew up with them. Their parents just passed them on. Their parents, their daddy name, their mama name is how they got into school and they still feel it. How they got a job and they can't do it. All these things. My children will not be like that. My children will know the value of hard work and education and how to speak up for yourself and how not to let anyone tell you who you're going to be. Absolutely not. And I put like their mama has done for many years and many careers, which included academia. Thank you all for your cooperation and continued support of all young people. And I put believe in yourself, learn and never stop wanting to build a better world. Mary McLeod Bethune, happy Black History Month. Next month is Women's History Month and I will be educating the education system on the importance of all women since they are confused. Yeah, because a lot of times that pushback that you get from women, it's unacceptable. It is unacceptable, completely unacceptable. So I had to tell, let me clear up your confusion. 
And I had to break it down and put all the links in about how I know the process. And that if my children do well with what they're supposed to do with school and volunteering and their sports and everything like that and their activities, then that can work. My children, I'm not rushing them to go get a job. They don't need to go get a job to support the family like some folk do. Mm -mm. Nope. That's why I stand on my feet 10, 12 hours a day. Yes, indeed. And they have a daddy. So that's what they get twisted and don't seem to understand. So I help them understand. Now they understand. Let's see. Let's see. I already volunteer with many people and sit on many boards. So I get my children a job anywhere. What I'm doing, and I should have said so I can, but whatever. I What I am doing is showing my daughters how to navigate their careers. Sometimes children do not want to listen to their parents. And this is why I put them in opportunities to learn from others. This is why I plan ahead and read everything to know how the process works. Mm -hmm. And I put, you know, that one of my very first jobs was in the education system as a young person. And I loved it. My children will not be working in fast food or any industry that does not support young women. In other words, they had careers and not jobs. This is why I'm doing the groundwork now to ensure their success. And I talked about the qualifications that I know that they need. And I put the link there of what they need to do. That's it. And because we all have other people that make decisions over our children's lives, we need to advocate before these people. Half of them don't even have children. So I don't know what the hell they doing making decisions for education about children. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to have children to make decisions, but a lot of times it does come in handy when you've had experience with children. And maybe not even your children, but as a niece, as an aunt, as a grandmother, whomever. If you've worked with children, you know. So that's why when I am working with children, I work with their teachers. I work with everybody. And if we can't agree, then that's one thing. But we're going to come together on common ground as to what I think, what I see, what I feel is best. And I include my children. I let my children make decisions. But however, they're still children, which means I still make those decisions. And their father. Just like when we, um, one time we were at um, a doctor's office and the nurse practitioner tried to tell my children, oh, you can kick your mom out the room if you don't want her in here. I said, no, they cannot. And don't you ever tell my children they can kick me out of anywhere or exclude me. That's what they want to do. Separate you from your child so your child is not making the best decisions. They're not making the decisions that you want them to make. What you feel for your family, you have a right to that. That's why a lot of people are protesting against the school system. A lot of school systems tell you, you can't opt out of this. Yes, you can. You have to just accept this. No, you do not. So you have a school board and they have meetings and it behoove you to get your behind to that school board, whether it's virtual, whether it's in person or whether you do what I do. You make them phone calls and you send those emails and you make it clear. I will be heard. I will. There are plenty of women who paved the way. So while we're going to still celebrate Black History Month, wait till March 1st. We're going to celebrate all these dynamic women of every color, of every background that have paved the way for success. And they are rarely credited. You always got somebody either trying to steal their work or discredit them. Absolutely not. So I put, um, while it was not my intention to confuse you, I include you in the email. Because I want to make sure that my intentions for my children are well stated. Additionally, I want to make sure that they complete the requirements. If they don't want to do the program, if they don't want to do that, that's fine. It will be their choice, but it will not be because they were not prepared or they were not given the right opportunities and the correct information. But that I'm well versed in what everyone does. I sincerely hope that we are now on the same page. Please let me know if you have any further questions or any helpful information. I travel a lot and pay attention. And well, I know they're probably like, hey, made a typo. It's okay. It happens. I've been sending emails all morning and pay attention if I miss something, which is good that I put that. It's okay. You might make a mistake, which I did, which people do. So I made a little typo. So instead of saying I pay attention to everything, I put and pay attention to everything. So if I miss something, do not hesitate to let me know. Exactly. And then I put. And mine is a terrible thing to waste. That's a nice way of telling you, you are a stupid bitch. 
really, really a stupid bitch. But that's not what you want to say. So it's one thing to say it in your mind. It's another thing that comes out your mouth. What comes out your mouth because words get killed. And the power of the tongue ain't nothing to be played with. Nothing. Nothing to be played with whatsoever. Let me forward this email. And that's another reason why you want to keep an email and a paper trail of all the things that you're doing with your family with yourself in general, I mean, how, would I be looking to take the LSAT if I was dumb? Hell no. I know how to set the stage, how to set things up clearly, and how to make sure you ain't going to be running that damn mouth. No, you will not. Not to me, not to my children, not to anybody, baby. Okay. Perfect. I'm going to forward this to the principal of the school. Because, see, that's another thing. Is that not only do I find this type of behavior everywhere where people are trying to separate children from parents in terms of you can make your own decisions with this whole woke foolishness. Mm -mm, absolutely not. Pull out. Yeah. And that's the thing is that how you are presented matters. And when people are trying to misrepresent you, trying to speak on your behalf, absolutely not. I even had people who tried that in front of me. She means this. I said, no, you don't talk for me. I talk for me. That's your problem. You got somebody always trying to be jumping in your business, trying to talk for you, trying to advocate what you feel, what you meant. Did I tell you this? And the first thing I tell them, somebody say something, where'd you get your information from? Because it ain't correct. And I got a company that owe me some damn money. And I'm not playing with the ass at all. Read my little emails before I take a shower. And one thing I do, too, if I've been in my house all day, I'm going to take a shower so I can be nice and fresh. Because best believe, baby, never know when somebody going to run in my mouth and then I got to go to jail. Uh-uh. Nope. That was a long time ago. Right? A long time ago. That's I learned. People will try to set you up real fast and try to make you look stupid. Not me. Not me, baby. So they still haven't sent my money. You know, I really get tired of the foolishness. Let me check one more thing. Okay, that's the eighth. Write that down. And I sit on a lot of boards. So again, I, my children are not going to be taught the wrong thing. Nepotism, cronyism. They don't work for it. And that way they can say, this is what I accomplished. This is what I did. And I can say, yes, baby, you did do that. And remember the people that helped to get you where you're at. So that's that. But this is a way of what I do to show people how I start my day off handling what needs to be handled. All right, one more phone. Mm. And I got one more thing to handle. And I don't know how to handle it. See? You know how to handle your business. Is that when people get in your business? You know how to handle them, too. Facts don't lie. Paperwork doesn't lie. And that's why I've been so successful in all these lawsuits that I've had all throughout my life. Because I know what to do. I read the rules. I see what I need, how I need to prevail. And I look at prior case history to see um, how did this work out for other people. It's going to work out great for me, baby. It's going to work out great. See, I have a beautiful day. And as I have stated, I'm about to eat. Get, eat before you leave. Because even though, you know, 
And all I had today so far was just the oranges, the water, the coffee, and a few pieces of turkey bacon. So I got my soup, and I'm going to eat my soup with my little chicken. Not fried. Fat. Let me show y'all how it's done. Let me put this on the charger because tonight I have a lot of things to do. Like go to the gym. Like go to the gym. And so that's how you organize your day, your thoughts, your mind, your plan, your game plan of what you are going to accomplish. Put me in the game. I'm the coach, the QB. Check this weather out. Okay. It don't look too bad. Because that's another sign, too. As I always mention to people, you best check that weather before you get on out there. And look, they're calling for rain. The minute you don't bring that umbrella is when it rains. When it rains. Wash my hands. That's why I like doing this here. It's education. And it's powerful. And I really appreciate it. Before I started my day, I prayed. And then I heard some other people talk about their experience because it's very powerful you hear other people say hey i'm going through the same thing myself baby and we have to travel take some snacks with you take something even though you may be like oh i'm not hungry i'm okay best believe you won't be hungry and i have work to do baby so that's what I mean when I say I come, I come to win. I come to win. Yeah. I'm not sitting up there just giving it away. Only thing I give away is knowledge and opportunities. I give those away for free. I don't charge people. When people tell me they want to get a job, I say, no, you want to get a career. What do you want to do? Let's think about it here. What is it that you want to do? What is it that you would like to accomplish? And that is how I work with people. And that's especially how I work with young people, college students. So that's why, you know, these individuals who I'm talking to this morning, they don't know who they're talking to. They don't know at all, but I help them find their way, baby. Got me a water. And this, and I'll probably take some little, let me grab a trail mix as we speak. I might treat myself, and I do like to treat myself and eat out and all that stuff. It's fun, you know. I just, I've eaten. I feel like my daughter told me the other day, she's like, Mommy, we've eaten everywhere. I'm like, I know. That's what it really feels like. And we travel a lot. So I'm going to get ready. One of the things that I'm going to do is getting ready for a college tour. Start touring some colleges. I want a black HBCU college tour. You know. And I play as Delta. Even though I got some AKK, AKA colors on, and that's fine. If my children, oh my God, want to be AKAs, I have to just deal with it. Even though we are the best steppers you see. Delta, come on sisters, don't play with me. Oh yeah, I, I did a whole stomp show and all that with the umbrellas. You, you cappers ain't got nothing on us with them canes. I will take your cane and show you how to use it. Eddie, our brother's nail wood. Because I did want to go to Spelman. And I even looked at North Carolina Central. Really good schools, especially for law. North Carolina Central used to be one of the top tier schools for uh, pre-law. And you never know. Maybe I will go to North Carolina. <laughs> North Carolina, come on and raise up. Take your shirt off. Twist it around your head. Like a helicopter. So I'm going to educate y'all real quick. Uh, Queen Charlotte, 
Queen Charlotte of Germany. That's right, you heard me. A black woman from Germany. Guten Dog. She's an artist. A lot of things. And she wasn't crazy. Like they all, or her husband, like they all try to make it seem. Tell y'all what. Since I'm getting my food ready, y'all gonna watch a video about Queen Charlotte. She was the queen of England, Ireland, Germany, Scotland, cheerio. So that's how I know about the Scottish rites. That's how I know about the Irish. Yeah. And I also know about England. So that's how I know my royal roots, the Moors, the ruling class. So we're going to watch a little video about Queen Charlotte of Middlesbrough, Germany. What's up, man? Told y'all, black women, we ain't nothing to play with. And I know, because a lot of times, even when we see a black woman going on, we like, oh, shit, there she go. But remember what was said to that woman, what was done to that woman that got her to the point where she don't give a fuck and will cut your ass all the way out. Put a smile. Keep it moving, baby. And say, God bless you. Mm hmm Let's look up Queen Charlotte. There's actually a lot of queens that we're going to be focusing on. And, you know, of course, I got to make a movie, Queen Charlotte Bridgerton. Not even the real story. And that's part of the issue is that too many people make up shit as they go. They just make shit up. Oh, I'm going to make a story about somebody. And then they just make shit up. You know, fact versus fiction. It's crazy. It is crazy. You can tell they didn't whitewash this woman's face. You can tell they whitewashed her face. Even here. So, I believe the Queen Charlotte would look a lot like people like me, black women. Mm-hmm. Who just cause we're light skin? Because you see this? This is how my hair is. Thick and curly and natural. I like to change it up. I like to switch it up. I'm gonna find me a good video. <laughs> they completely whitewashed her. Britain's first black queen. But actually, all the queens have been black, even Elizabeth. The real Elizabeth is black. Cheerio. Oh, you don't take the queen of me, Today you are looking into a life of Charlotte of Mecklenburg Strelitz, a minor German princess who married King George III of Britain, becoming queen consul thereafter. Owing to her unusual background, a source of debate over the years, and this has surged recently. Following her depiction in the Netflix series Bridgerton, this is her story. Today's video was sponsored by Apple. Princess Sophia Charlotte was born on the 19th of May 1744 at the Palace of Miro in the Duchy of Mecklenburg Strelitz in northern Germany. She was the second daughter of Duke Charles Louis Frederick of Mecklenburg Strelitz and his wife, Elizabeth Albertina of Saxe Hildburghausen. Charlotte was homeschooled, as was typical for high-ranking aristocratic women at the time. Her tutor was Mademoiselle Grabo, a noted female poet of the mid-18th century. From her, Charlotte developed an appreciation of reading the most substantial works being produced during the Enlightenment, as well as being widely read in theology. As well as her native German, she learned to speak French fluently in her youth. This was not unusual, and prior to the ascent of the British Empire in the 19th century, French was the lingua franca of early modern Europe. Charlotte would go on to further her language skills in time, but sadly, she didn't have today's sponsor Babel to help her. People here on the channel always ask me about my pronunciation and also the languages that I speak, and other than English and Spanish, which I know very well, I also speak some French, thanks to years of learning in school. And also Ooh, because of the occasional trip to France here and there. I haven't practiced in years, but luckily, Babel keeps me on the top of my game. Babel teaches real-world practice.
interactive okay. conversation okay. with okay. interactive short lessons. That's why I got to There are multiple ways quick. to learn, including podcasts, I mean, stop games, video and for videos. A keeping you in. I don't mind people get sponsorships, but that's part of why I don't want to do sponsorships because I don't want the information. I mean, granted, that is a good tie-in. I'm not going to lie. He did an excellent way of tying in the commercial because there's nothing worse than when somebody's doing a commercial and you can tell it's obvious. He did that very smooth. So I'm not hating on him. He's going to get his money. That's how you get your money. If you have a sponsorship, sponsor something that's relevant to your message, relevant to what you believe in. I believe. I like Babbel. I actually use Babbel. So there goes my soup that I made homemade. Got it out the freezer. My chicken that I cooked. Got that out the fridge. So that's how I'm able to have a healthy meal. Yeah. Let's carry on. Entertained and concentrated. I've learned phrases such as Do ce dis pour dimanche, meaning will you be available on Sunday? And j'aime beaucoup la série que tu m'as conseillé, meaning I really love the series you recommended to me. Get 65% off your subscription and click the link in the description to start speaking a new language in just three weeks. Now back to the video. Much attention has been paid in recent times to Charlotte's ethnicity, with Charlotte being portrayed as Britain's first black queen. There is some basis to supposing this, in that Charlotte was distantly related to Marichim Afonso Xixoro, an illegitimate son of the 13th century king of Portugal, Afonso III. Marichim's mother was Afonso's Moorish mistress, who was black. As such, Charlotte did indeed have some faint African Islamic ancestry, but this was at a remove of centuries, and it would have been stretching things to suggest that she was Britain's first black queen. However, as we will see, there were other issues which arose during her reign which have compounded this idea. In 1761, King George III of Britain, who was Charlotte's senior by six years, and who had just ascended to the throne of Britain the previous year, organized to marry Charlotte. The House of Hanover, of which George was a member, had originated in Germany before rising to become the British royal family. The Hanoverians tended to favor German marriage partners during the 18th century. 17-year-old Charlotte arrived to London on the 8th of September and was married to the king hours later at St. James's Palace. She did not speak English, and her new home was alien to her. Fortunately, the marriage quickly proved a happy one. Charlotte and George developed an abiding love for one another, one based on a large family and their shared interests. Both were keenly interested in the arts, theatre and music, as well as the new scientific breakthroughs which everywhere were transforming European life around them. Thus, as the 1760s went on, and as Charlotte became conversant and then fluent in English, she grew into the role of Queen Consort, acting as George's rock through many tribulations. As Queen of England, Charlotte's portrait was painted many times over the years, both singly and as part of group portraits, including the King and other members of the royal family. The idea that Charlotte's very thin African ancestry was plain to see in her appearance has been compounded by these portraits, many of which depict her skin as being quite sallow, and her facial features as being reflective of her Moorish heritage. However, there may have Moorish been a large heritage. political bias involved here. Moors. Throughout the reign, the slavery issue was becoming more and more central to British politics. George himself moved from being a traditionalist when it came to upholding slavery in the British Empire to showing increasing favour to the abolitionist movement during the 1780s and 1790s. Some of those who painted Charlotte with what could traditionally be described as particularly African features were involved in the abolitionist movement themselves politically. One of these, for instance, was Sir Alan Ramsay, who was the uncle-in-law of Dido Elizabeth Lindsay, the adopted black grandniece of Lord Mansfield, a prominent British noble. As such, some of the portraits of Charlotte which were produced in the second half of the 18th century were not politically neutral, and the decision to represent her skin tone and facial features in a particular way may not have been entirely representative of Charlotte's actual appearance. 
The reality, which is not captured in Bridgerton, is that Charlotte's actual African ancestry was extremely limited and diluted over a period of half a millennium. So, it is inaccurate to suggest that she was Britain's first black queen. While the issue of Charlotte's ancestry remains a point of debate, there is no doubting that her marriage to George became more difficult over time. This was not owing to a falling out, but to George's psychological state. In the 1780s, the king became increasingly unwell, often having periods of mania in which he would talk energetically to anyone present for hours on end, punctuated by crashes in his emotional state and complete lethargy. The exact cause of George's malady remains unclear to this day, but historians generally believe it was caused by porphyria, a liver ailment which causes toxins to build up in one's blood, which poisons a person without killing them. This blood poisoning then begins to impact on the brain, and is degenerative over time. What was imprecisely known as the madness of King George was a source of concern for Charlotte, the royal family and the government. But it truly became a state issue in October 1788 when George descended into a period of psychological collapse, one which it took the king months to recover from. In the interim, the government took steps to establish a regency government whereby George and Charlotte's eldest son, George, would become regent for his father. Charlotte, who could see her son's ambitions outweighed any concern for his father, remained the king's stalwart supporter throughout this time often encouraging other members of the court to continue to display loyalty to the king even as his illness dragged on. She was rewarded in this when he eventually recovered in the late spring of 1789. Charlotte's relationship with her son remained fractured thereafter, as did the king's increasingly as George Jr. bided his time to see if his father would suffer another collapse at some stage. Throughout her reign, Charlotte became known for her patronage of the arts and her charitable work. For instance, Thomas Gainsborough, Johann Zoffany, and Mary Molesel were painters who were all patronised by the royal family. Charlotte also employed Molesel to teach her daughters how to draw. Molesel was not alone as a woman who was patronised in her artistic endeavours by the Queen, and several female English writers got their start by garnering the financial support of the Queen at a time when women writers still had huge obstacles in front of them to be successful. The Queen was also accomplished from a musical perspective and played the harpsichord herself with some skill. Johann Christian Bach, the son of the more renowned Johann Sebastian, was her music master in London from 1764 to his death in 1782 and gave Charlotte singing lessons during his extensive time in England. This led to him becoming known as the London Back. On the continent, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, the greatest composer of the age, acknowledged her appreciation of classical music by dedicating six different sonatas to Charlotte. In terms of charity, one of Charlotte's main focuses was on the Magdalen Hospital in London, a sanctuary for former prostitutes which had been founded in 1758 and which she became the patron of in the mid-1760s. She provided thousands of pounds towards the erection of new buildings here in 1769. A more traditional charity which she worked with was St. Catherine's Hospital, which provided alms to widows and other women. Unlike many other former queens of England, Charlotte did not suffer from any natal issues, and she had 15 children with George in all. In fact, somewhat strange for the time, she appears to have had no miscarriages or stillborn infants, at a time when both miscarriages and infant mortality were still very high. It is an indication of how women's lives were dominated by childbearing in pre-born times that Charlotte was either pregnant or nursing an infant continuously from 1762 when she fell pregnant with her first child George, right the way through to the mid-1780s when she gave birth to her 15th child Amelia. Of Charlotte and George's 15 children, 9 were boys and 6 were girls. They were exceptionally fortunate in that 13 of these would live into adulthood and 12 would outlive both their parents. Only two, Prince Octavius and Prince Alfred, born in 1779 and 1780 respectively, died in childhood. 
both seemingly from smallpox within a few months of each other, in 1782 and 1783. Charlotte and George were devastated by their deaths, but their sadness was eased somewhat by the birth of Princess Amelia, their final child, in August 1783. However, in the late 1790s, Amelia's own health began to decline in what were the first stages of tuberculosis. Eventually, she succumbed to this in 1810, much to her parents' heartbreak. Amelia's final illness and death was significant in more ways than one, for it was the episode which seems to have finally pushed King George's mind over the precipice on which it had been dangling for so many years. Although he recovered from his extended bout of madness in 1789, Further prolonged periods of listlessness and mania occurred in 1801 and 1804. Consequently, successive governments were always wary of when George might be needed to be sidelined, and his son and heir, Prince George, asked to step into his shoes. Hmm. This is what happened in 1810, right around the time of Amelia's final illness. The king descended into another reality from which he never returned, and Prince George became regent for his father. George was moved to several departments at Windsor Castle in 1811, and there, his physicians advised that he should largely be left alone. As such, he spent his last remaining nine years largely isolated and conversing with people who were long dead, including two deceased sons. Though he lived until 1820, by that time he was blind and completely incapacitated. Charlotte should not be criticised for leaving him like this. Nobody understood what his condition was at the time, and it was the agreed medical advice that George's condition would only worsen if there was extensive stimuli around him. Charlotte herself died before her husband, though to all intents she lived as a widow for the last years of her life. In the first months and years she tried to maintain as much continuity as possible in the government, in the hopes that George might recover, as he had in 1789. However, as the years passed by and it became clear that he would not recover, she concentrated increasingly on facilitating her eldest son to rule as regent for his father. Curiously, despite the survival of 12 of her and George III's children into adulthood, Charlotte had only one grandchild born during her lifetime. This was a daughter of Prince George's, whom he had named after her grandmother. But Princess Charlotte's own life was blighted by her father and mother, having split acrimoniously, though without divorcing during her youth. She died in childbirth in 1817, a further blow to her grandmother. Consequently, when Queen Charlotte died on the 17th of November 1818, aged 74, she did so with lingering doubts over the continuation of her and George's royal line. She was buried in St George's Chapel at Windsor Castle on the 2nd of December 1818, where she was joined by her husband just over a year later. She is the longest serving female consort in British history, having served for a total of 57 years and 70 days. Thank you everyone for watching this video on Queen Charlotte. I hope you found it interesting. Let me know what you thought of her life down below in the comments. And if you have any suggestions, also be sure to leave them in the comments. I hope you guys are subscribed and have notifications turned on to get all my videos as soon as I upload them. Anyway, that's all from me. So I'll see all of you in the next Forgotten Life. Thanks. Alrighty. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Not everything is as it seems. And it seems like... Hmm. A little orange thing in my tea. Lord is great. The Lord is good. Thank the Lord for my food, for my children, for my health, and for my country. Seems like somebody was just trying to get George out the way, like a son. And if you ever realize that throughout history, this has happened a lot with royal families, where you know you have to wait your turn. Can't knock off your father. Can't knock off your mother. Mm -hmm. That's I already know that I'm a queen. The queen. Not a drag queen. No, I'm a real woman. And I know that might hurt some of y'all feelings, and I do not care. Because why do y'all need to be called drag queens? Y'all not queens. You're men. Men should be kings, not trying to be a queen. And a lot of times, what you find is that nowadays, these so-called women that want to come against me, they're not even women. So, 
You can feel how you want to feel about your identity, but you can't steal women's identity of what we have done and created in the world. Clearly. Clearly. And the only way to get a way to get rid of you is to say that you're what? Incompetent. That uh, a number of things, as you can imagine. So don't believe the hype. Now, education is powerful. Y'all been educated. I have to go. I have things to do. And I focus this whole entire morning on my children and their education because it is just that important to me, to their father, and to everybody. It should be education. So, looks like normally today would be the last year, last day of Black history. But since we got a leap day, we're going to take that leap of faith. I'm going to ask the Lord, please restore us, all black people, back to our rightful positions as the ruling class, as the Moors. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about Queen Khalifa. You know what? I got time, actually. What time is it? Hop in my Uber. I got to be there. I got 15 minutes. I'm going to eat my food. Y'all going to watch a video and become melanated today. You want to call yourself enlightened? Act like it.